They're gonna come up with different ideas. Well, this is Bitcoin, but with this little feature. And this is Bitcoin with this little feature and that little feature. And this is Bitcoin with this feature, but not that feature. We're gonna remove this, we're gonna add this. And I think it's gonna be a very interesting 2018 dealing with it. And it's way too early to predict what's gonna come in 2019. So right now we're in 2017 and it feels like every year there is another trend. Uh, in 2012, it was mostly just Bitcoin. In 2013, the first altcoins came out. In 2014 is where we had this altcoin boom. boom, boom, boom with um, Litecoin, and Litecoin came out earlier, but others like Dash and um, some of the other ones are Monero. And this is when they were starting to become popular. Everyone was talking about altcoins. Uh, that, that was 2014. 2015, uh, this is where the word blockchain started to come out. And if people wanted to, you know, do new databases and we need a blockchain and everything is going to be blockchains. This is also when uh, new applications were coming out, things like Ethereum, things like BitShares. Uh, the latest one coming out is um, EOS and uh, Waves came out not too long ago. This is the world computer for smart contracts, um, which is also its own currency. That's the part that I find problematic. Uh, you can do smart contracts. You don't need to create your own currency alongside. But um, now 2017 seems to clearly be the year of the ICO. This is where you have uh, some kind of an idea and you're creating your own currency, your own application token, uh, just to sell your idea, no matter what that idea is everywhere. So what is going to happen next? Because every year the trend completely changes. We just had Bcash and what Bcash did was it took the most decentralized, the most spread around the world token, which is Bitcoin, and it started everybody off with some of this alternative from, the, from those that already have it. This might be the new model for 2018. Uh, we'll have another one of these come out later this year with Segwit2x because they don't like those big blocks. They want their own different kind of big blocks. And I think this could be the next model because it's hard at this point to sell your token. People are starting to get caught up. The easy money has been made. How do you make the next round of easy money? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna look for some of these successful crypto currencies like Bitcoin, like Ethereum, unfortunately, it's pretty widespread, uh, maybe a few others, and you're gonna clone it and sell it in a way to have people that, to be already invested by default because they have the most decentralized currency like Bitcoin. So forks of Bitcoin are about to become very popular in my opinion. They're gonna come up with different ideas. Well, this is Bitcoin, but with this little feature. And this is Bitcoin with this little feature and that little feature. And this is Bitcoin with this feature, but not that feature. We're gonna remove this, we're gonna add this. And I, I think we are about to see a world with a bunch of Bitcoins. Maybe they'll start changing the names of their forks, but they're gonna kind of force people like myself, there are true Bitcoin believers, into some of this easy money and unfortunately promote it alongside because everyone asks us questions. Well, what do you think of this clone? What do you think of that clone? And uh, we will already be invested in these alternatives, not that we want to, but because of the way the system is designed. And I think it's gonna be a very interesting 2018 dealing with it and it's way too early to predict what's gonna come in 2019. So in the next 12 months, I'm really looking forward to our first lightning transactions. This was one of the big battles we've been dealing with for almost two years now. How do we scale Bitcoin? And the smartest solution from the engineers 
from people who have been doing this for five, six years is we can't hard fork. We can't force everyone to use a bigger block and it makes no sense. Uh, even if we could force everyone to make a bigger block, what is it gonna do? You're just making the highway bigger. And what's gonna happen? Later you're gonna have to make it even bigger. Uh, you gotta have a better solution. You can't keep making a highway bigger uh, and um, storing all that data becomes a bit problematic and there could be additional mining centralization. So the solution was segregated witness. And what segregated witness does is it eliminated, eliminated this bug called transaction malleability. Uh, once transaction malleability uh, gets eliminated, we will be able to start testing out second layer scaling solutions, which by some accounts would give us thousands of transactions per second perhaps one day even infinite number of transactions a second. And I'm really looking forward to seeing real, real scale. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. And that should be coming towards the end of the year, if not early next year, uh, our first real life commerce transactions on Lightning, which is off-chain transactions, which are secure and potentially more private. Speaking of private, there is another development that is happening is that uh, some core developers are really looking at fungibility solutions. So fungibility is, is a word used uh, to, uh, for privacy purposes so that every Bitcoin or every part of a Bitcoin is as anonymous as any other part of a Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin isn't fully anonymous right now and there are plenty of companies that are tracking everything people are doing and trying to identify people using Bitcoin. Uh, some of the projects that people are working on, one of them is called Mimblewimble, uh, which would strongly help with this fungibility. Uh, there are also other projects like Confidential Transactions and some, of the, uh, some other ones. Uh, so I'm also looking forward to that. But to me, this privacy and fungibility was always something good as a layer on top of Bitcoin. Putting full privacy on the Bitcoin foundation, on the blockchain itself, would eliminate Bitcoin from being used in ways where you don't want full fungibility. Sometimes we want to know who's using the money and who's spending the money. I know that the government always wants to know how the people are using and spending the money. But the people want to see how the government is using and spending the money. So I was always of the belief that when it comes to money, if you're a private citizen and you uh, work in the, and you earn your money through voluntary means, people are buying your service, people are buying your product, people are happy with your service or a product, you should have the right to full privacy and use that money in any way that you like. When it comes to government and tax collection, because they collect from the productive people and claim to spend that money for the good of those people, all of those transactions need to be public for the people that they take the money from. So having full Bitcoin uh, fungibility uh, is not good because then you would not be able to see how the government is spending the money if you can't get a government to adopt a system like Bitcoin. Uh, and that's what I'm looking for. We have fungibility as a second layer and then you can easily um, have certain aspects of the economy showing you all of the transactions while another section of the economy uh, is able to completely uh, make their transactions anonymous uh, and one day hopefully somebody from my generation will run for politics and they would push for this open view, open spending of money from the government side of the equation.